All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Night Skies of Fort Collins. Uh, once again, my name is Ben Gondres, and I am the Dome Theater Manager at the Fort Collins Museum of Discovery. And it's my pleasure to bring this program to you to tell you a little bit about what you can find in the night skies above Fort Collins. Now, with that being said, if you are watching from somewhere that is not in Fort Collins, that is totally fine. We are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube, so we may have people from all over the place watching the live stream tonight, which is amazing. Um, but as long as you're within the Northern Hemisphere of the Earth, everything that I talk about should be pretty much the same, given some slight adjustments based on your exact latitude and where you are located. Um, with that said, this is a live program, as I said before. So if you do have any questions or comments during the show, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will try to answer those as quickly as possible. Um, so for the show tonight, we are going to once again be utilizing some virtual planetarium software called Stellarium, uh, which I'll make just a little bit larger in a moment here. But Stellarium is a really amazing program. It's actually free and open source. So you can actually go to stellarium.org and download it yourself. And there's also a web version. If you don't want to actually download it to your computer, um, you can utilize that web version to check out the night sky virtually for yourself. And the reason you might want to do this is uh, so that you can actually plan your sky gaze, stargazing trips, excuse me, uh, before you actually head out to uh, look at the actual night sky. As you can probably know, uh, trying to find some of these objects in the night sky can be kind of difficult if you don't know exactly where to look. And so utilizing Stellarium, uh, you can jump to the future. So you, I, uh, as I'll show you in just a moment here, you can move time forward uh, so that you can actually see what the sky is going to look like in the future. And you can also jump to different locations on the Earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if you would like to see the sky as it would appear from your home, you can do that like we're going to do tonight. Or you could even look at the sky as it appears from the southern hemisphere, which would be pretty cool uh, so that you can get a completely different experience. So once again, you can find Stellarium at stellarium.org and it is a free download to uh, utilize. And I'll actually uh, show you a little bit about how you can use Stellarium uh, in just a moment here to find some objects in the sky and show you exactly how to take that knowledge from Stellarium and apply it to the night sky itself. All right, and one more uh, very special announcement that I wanna make is the museum is open. Um, that's right, you can come visit us at the Fort Collins Museum of Discovery. I do suggest that you visit our website at fcmod.org slash reopening so that you know exactly what to expect before you come. We are doing time ticketing, so you do need to get your tickets in advance. Um, and you can learn about all the things that we are doing to keep our visitors safe and healthy during this time. So we do encourage you to come and uh, visit us if you would like. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will see you around. And also, if you enjoy tonight's program, please do consider uh, a, a donation of any amount um, so that we can continue to bring these programs to you uh, in this time and show you the amazing wonders of the night sky, as well as all the other amazing live stream content that we have going on right now. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into Stellarium and see what we can find in the night sky right now. So here we are at about the current time, and let's go ahead and move time forward so that we can see the sun set. And as you can see, the sun is being trailed pretty closely here by another bright object. And uh, does anyone have a guess as to what that bright object might be? You might guess uh, a planet, uh, especially if you've watched the show before, as I've said that planets often uh, show up before other stars in the night sky. However, the sun is still up here. And uh, what's a, another celestial body that you can see while the sun is up? That's right, it's the moon. Um, so this is the moon setting right behind the sun. And it was actually a new moon or a dark moon on Monday night. And so tonight, the moon phase is a very thin crescent moon. So let's go ahead and uh, pause time and just go look at that moon in detail. 
All right, so here we can see the moon uh, is lit, just this little portion of it on the right side here. And that means we are moving towards a full moon. And this side of the moon being lit makes sense because of where the sun is. The sun just set below the horizon and uh, it was down into the right of the moon. And so it makes sense that this side of the moon is lit. And that's what gives us moon phases is the side of the sun that is lit or the side of the moon, excuse me, that is lit by the sun. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out and continue to let the sun set so that we can see our first celestial object that we're going to find here. And I'm going to go till about 9.30, maybe 9.45, actually. All right, let's go ahead and slow down time here. And we are going to look to the northwest. And this is because, uh, of course, we have a very special visitor to our night skies right now. You've probably heard about it. You may have even seen lots of different pictures of it. But this is Comet C2020 F3 Neowise, or more commonly known as Comet Neowise. And the reason it's known as Comet Neowise is because it was the Neowise Earth orbiting satellite that actually first spotted this comet. So Comet Neowise still hangs in the northwest in late twilight. And if you want to go look for it, you should plan to look for it about an hour and a half after sunset and less long if you happen to be in the southern United States or even further south. The comet has been fading a little slower than predicted. It uh, was still hanging on at a third magnitude as of July 18th. And if you recall in the magnitude scale, the lower the number, the brighter the object with the magnitude one being the brightest star in the night sky. The comet is passing closest to earth tonight actually However, it's receding from the sun, making it appear dimmer. So to find the comet, and this is where a program like Stellarium will come in real handy. Uh, you're gonna wanna find a common uh, asterism known as the Big Dipper. You guys can probably see it. You're probably all very familiar with the Big Dipper, but it's made up of these seven stars. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And of course, the Big Dipper is an asterism that is part of the constellation of Ursa Major or the Big Bear. And here you can see Leo's tail also setting behind this tree here. But to find Comet Neowise, you're going to look at the Dipper part of the Big Dipper here. And you're going to go down about uh, 15 to 10 degrees towards the horizon. And the way that I know that it's 15 to 10 degrees is by using a uh, imaginary grid called the azimuthal grid in Stellarium. And you can see that this is just a grid that covers the entire sky in Stellarium. And it starts directly overhead and goes down towards the horizon. And each segment of these squares is 10 degrees. So if we go down about 10 to 15 degrees, and look about in this region of space here, let's go ahead and zoom in and see if we can find the comet. And sure enough, let's go ahead and turn off our grid. There is Comet Neowise. Uh, and you can see its tail pointing up and away from the sun. And uh, you can see this comet with your unaided eye. In fact, this uh, image here is not by far not the best image of Comet Neowise ever taken. There are lots of other amazing images on the internet. However, this is an image that I happened to take with my cell phone when I spotted Comet Neowise above Horsetooth Reservoir uh, this past weekend. I actually went out to try to see it in the pre-dawn sky a, few, a couple weeks ago, and unfortunately was unable to see it due to clouds. But fortunately, the clouds parted in the Northwest on this evening and I was able to see it in its uh, full glory here. And so this is just to illustrate that even with a cell phone, you can take a picture of this comet. So with your unaided eye, you will definitely be able to see this comet. And what you should expect to see, as you can see in this image, is a small bright fuzzy spot, possibly with an orange or green hue. Now binoculars will reveal the comet's faint tail extending generally upwards away from the sun. 
And this is not necessarily a binocular view, but this is a really amazing picture that I wanted to show you guys just to show the tail structure here. And uh, actually you can, as you can see in this image, there are actually two tails pointed in slightly different directions. A brighter one on the right of the image, composed of the debris the comet is dropping behind it, and a fainter blue tinted one composed of ionized gas. And this blue tail will always point directly away from the sun since it is being pushed by the solar wind. Now, as the comet uh, swings through the solar system, we see the move with respect to the background stars night to night and even hour by hour. This comet, which originated in the distant Oort cloud of icy bodies that envelops our sun, dropped into the inner solar system from below or south of the plane of the planet's orbits, as you can see in this image. On July 3rd, it passed through that plane as it rounded the sun just outside the orbit of Mercury. Now the comet is swinging upward north of that plane while it flies away from the sun. The trajectory will bring the comet closest to the Earth, or perigee, tonight at approximately 9 p.m. Eastern Time or 7 p.m. Mountain Time, when it will be 64 million miles or 103.5 million kilometers away from us here on Earth. Now, unfortunately, as a comet nears Earth and looms larger, it will also be experiencing less heating from the sun causing it to fade in visual brightness due to less gas production. It's a trade-off that makes looking at the comet at the first opportunity your safest bet. So let's all keep our fingers crossed that uh, we the clouds part. I know it's been kind of cloudy and stormy here in Fort Collins the past week or so in the evenings, but let's hope the clouds part and you get a chance to see Comet Neowise for yourself. Awesome. Looks like someone was wondering why it was called Neowise, and I answered that, so that's great. Yeah, once again, it's for the Earth orbiting satellite that actually spotted uh, the comet. And I believe the satellite is specifically one that is looking towards the sun. All right. So let's go ahead and look at a few other objects that we can see in the night sky right now. Now, tonight is a right or right now, the sky night sky is a planet party. Um, there's actually five planets visible throughout the night. And planets are a lot of fun to look at because they often appear, uh, they appear much brighter than the stars surrounding them. And so they're easy to spot even with your naked eye. However, if you do have a telescope, you're going to get a much better view of them. And you can even see a lot of them in great detail. And also, since the moon was a new moon this past Wednesday, and as you saw, it set early in the evening, it means the sky is going to be very dark and uh, very gr good to see uh, lots of objects in the night sky without the, the light of the moon ruining the view. So the first two planets I'm going to point out are located just to the left of the constellation of Sagittarius, the Archer. And you can probably see these two bright spots next to Sagittarius. And these, of course, are Jupiter and Saturn. Now, these planets are both at opposition currently, which means that the Earth is actually between these planets and the Sun. And uh, Jupiter was directly at opposition on July 13th, and Saturn was at direct opposition this past Monday the 20th. So they rise around sunset, loom low in the southeast in twilight, and climb higher as the evening grows late. Let's go ahead and get a close-up view of these two gas giants. First, we'll zoom into Jupiter here. And if we move time forward, actually, we can see something really cool happen, I believe. Let's go till about... There we are. 1030. And what I wanted to point out is this object here, which is the moon Io. This is one of Jupiter's Galilean moons. And what's really neat is that you can see the shadow of Io on the cloudy surface of Jupiter. 
And if we zoom out, we can see some of the other Galilean moons here. We have Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. So once again, if you have a saddle, uh, satellite, excuse me, if you have a telescope, um, you can get a really, really nice view of these uh, objects. All right, and let's go ahead and zoom into Saturn now. And here we can see the rings of Saturn, as well as some of the moons of Saturn surrounding it. And now is a really good time, once again, to look at Saturn through a telescope, as you should be able to see the rings really well. And uh, in fact, it will be tilting even more so you can see more of the North and South Pole. All right, let's zoom out to see the next of our five planets in our planet party this evening. And let's move time forward so that we can watch directly in the east as the planet Mars rises. And Mars will rise due east at about midnight. So you can see we're at about midnight here. And sure enough, there is bright orange Mars. And let's go ahead and move a little bit faster here so we can get it up here. And Mars lies between the constellations of uh, Pisces, the fish, and, excuse me, Cetus, the sea monster. Let's go ahead and move time. There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and give uh, Mars a close-up look here as well. So here we can see Mars, the red planet. And uh, I think you can see a little bit of the south polar ice cap as well. Um, so that would be really cool to look at through a telescope, if you've got one handy. All right, let's zoom out here. And that was planet number three in our planet party this evening. Let's go ahead and turn a little bit farther to the north and move time forward so we can see our next two planets. And here's one of them rising in the northeast east. And this planet is the very bright planet, Venus. And Venus is currently in the constellation of, oops, excuse me, Taurus, the bull. And Venus is, of course, the second planet from the sun and is often the brightest object in the night sky. And let's move time forward even more. And you can see the sun beginning to rise here. And we have one more planet rising just as the sun rises. And that is the planet Mercury. And Mercury is located in the constellation of Gemini tonight. And Gemini are the twins. And Mercury uh, is actually brightening from a magnitude of 0.9 on July 18th to a magnitude of negative 0.2 on the 25th. And once again, the lower the number, the brighter the object. And uh, that's because Mercury is actually swinging around the sun and showing us more of its sunlight, or excuse me, sunlit side. Now, I also wanted to point out that all of these planets lie along an imaginary line called the ecliptic. Let me go ahead and turn on that line here. And the ecliptic is the apparent path of the sun through the sky. And all of the planets lie along the ecliptic because all of the planets in our solar system pretty much lie in the same plane as you saw earlier with my uh, uh, image of Neowise here. Here's that image. So you can see all of the planets are pretty much in the same flat plane, um, except for the dwarf planet Pluto, all the way in the back there. And that is why all of the planets lie along the ecliptic. And you may have also noticed something about the constellations that I pointed out that all of these planets are in. And that is that they are part of the zodiac uh, collection of constellations. Now the zodiac collection is, is not necessarily anything special or scientifically significant, but in ancient times, the zodiac constellations were very useful for cultures to know 
what time of year it was so they could determine where the sun was positioned in the eclip uh, along the ecliptic in the zodiac constellations and this was really really useful for them and in fact um, ancient cultures even were able to predict things like lunar eclipses and other celestial events utilizing these special set of constellations awesome let's see it looks like i might have a couple of questions here Oh, nope, just some comments. Awesome, so glad you guys are watching and enjoying. Excellent. So I also wanted to point out another celestial event that is happening this time of year. And to do that, I need to actually turn time backwards. And so I'm gonna just jump backwards a little bit here. Hopefully it's not too jarring for you. We're gonna go back to tonight at about 11 p.m. Here we are. And let's go ahead and face south again. So once again, here's Jupiter and Saturn. And I wanna tell you a little bit about the Southern Delta Acquired Meteor Shower, which is now ramping up for its peak on July 28th, when observers can expect about 20 meteors per hour. In fact, the shower has been active most of the month, officially starting on the 12th. As the date of the peak approaches, you may notice more and more sporadic meteors in the sky particularly if you observe for long periods of time from a dark site. The shower's radiant, uh, which means where the, the, uh, uh, the meteors seem to be radiating out of, is here in Aquarius. And uh, let's see. So to find it, you can locate bright Jupiter and Saturn then scan about 35 degrees east of a point roughly between the two planets to find the radiant of the Aquarids. And as I said before, with the new moon uh, now past, the next several days are actually an ideal time to watch for meteors. And the best time to look is early morning before dawn starts to brighten the sky. So all of you morning people, you can get up and see uh, a some meteors up in the night sky. Now, meteor showers happen when our Earth passes between uh, the orbital path of a comet. So when a comet nears the sun and warms up, it sheds bits and pieces that spread out into the comet's orbital stream. But co this comet's debris slams into the Earth's upper atmosphere at about 90,000 miles per hour, vaporizing and burning up as meteors or shooting stars. The parent body of Delta Aquarius meteor is not known with certainty. It was once thought to have originated from the breakup of what are now the Martsen and Croft sun grazing comets. More recently, 60, comet 69, or excuse me, 96P Machholz was loomed as the primary candidate for being the Delta Aquarius parent body. Donald Machholz discovered this comet in 1986. It's a short period comet whose orbit carries it around the sun once in a little over five years. At perihelion, which means its closest point to the sun, comet 96P swings well inside Mercury's orbit. Comet 96P last came to perihelion on October 27th, 2017, and will next come to perihelion on January 31st, 2023. So there's another comet to look forward to seen in the night sky. All right. Well, with that said, I think that about wraps up all of the different things that I wanted to show you in the night sky. And I do hope that you get out um, and hopefully the clouds part here in Fort Collins so that you can see Comet Neowise for yourself. And once again, if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to leave those in the com comments below and I will answer those. I'll stick around for a couple of minutes here uh, to see if you do have any questions. And again, if you did enjoy tonight's program, please do consider making a donation to the museum. Uh, we would really appreciate any amount that you could donate to keep these amazing programs going um, and to keep the discovery happening for you guys uh, while you are at home. All right, let's go to the comments section and see if we have any questions. Awesome, Stephanie was wondering, when was Neowise discovered? Um, it was actually discovered recently. Um, I can't remember the specific date, but let me see if I can find that. So it was actually discovered March 27th um, of this year. And uh, yeah, just 
it uh the comet um scientists believe that it has been uh to earth before about six thousand years ago and uh, they believe it will return again in about 6,000 years. So that's why we just found out about it. Uh, let's see, I have a basic telescope and have to practice with it a bit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big thing with telescopes. It's kind of tricky to get them aimed in the right place. Um, again, using a program like Stellarium, excuse me, it's over here. <laughs> using a program like Stellarium can really help you practice um, and find out where things are. And I forgot to mention earlier, about uh, relating the degrees in Stellarium to degrees in the night sky. Because you might be saying, well, I can't just turn on a grid in the night sky. And it's actually pretty simple. So if you actually hold out your arm at arm's length and look at the distance that your fist makes, that's about 10 degrees. And so you can stack your fists and that would be about 20 degrees. So that's a really easy way to, you can find the elevation of something above the horizon or away from a known set of stars like the Big Dipper, um, and then be able to measure that. And that's actually exactly how I found the comet um, last weekend myself. I found the Big Dipper and then I measured about 20 degrees with my fists and pretty quickly actually, I was able to find it. Even though it was just barely obscured by a little thin wispy cloud, um, I was able to see it pretty well at that point. So that's a really good way to find uh, objects in the night sky. Let's see if we have any more comments. Nope, don't see any. Excellent. Well, if you guys do have more comments, um, and also if you have questions or suggestions about things you might want me to cover in one of these night skies of Fort Collins episodes, please feel free to message us on uh, Facebook or email the museum, um, whatever you, whatever method works best for you. Um, so that we can continue to bring um, amazing content to you in this way and help you discover the night sky. All right, Let's stick around for a few more seconds, see if we have any more comments. When can you see this comment? Comment, excuse me, comment. Um, that's a really good question. So if you go out about an hour and a half after sunset, um, you should be able to pretty easily spot it in the northwest sky. So again, let me uh, turn my view around here to the northwest and let's back up time a little bit so that we can get a better view here. So about an hour and a half after sunset. So let's put it at about 930. And uh, again, if we look about 15 to 20 degrees below the Big Dipper, we should be able to see the comet in this region of space here, right there pretty easy to find um, in the Northwest sky. And uh, you know, you can find it at that time, but it should be, uh, it actually, as you can see, if we move time forward here, it does get lower on the horizon the later we go, uh, but it will actually go up in elevation night after night. Thanks for the question, Jill. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But once again, thank you all for joining me for another Night Skies of Fort Collins. Um, it's always a pleasure bringing uh, the night skies to you. And I do hope that we get some uh, clear skies so that you can get out and see some of these amazing things that uh, I was able to tell you about tonight. And uh, with that said, until next time, we will see you later. Have a great night, everyone, and keep looking up. <laughs>